The REIT sector is vast and versatile and there's truly something for everyone. Some REITs are very attractive for income seeking investors. A good example of that would be realty income. Then some other REITs are better suited for growth investors and here Prologis comes to my mind. Finally, there are even some REITs that are very compelling for deep value investors. Medicals Properties Trust could be a good example. But there are about 10 REITs that I think could fit in the portfolios of most investors. These REITs are rare in that they tick all the boxes. They have exceptional business models that should allow them to earn above average returns with below average risk. And that's what active investing is all about. These REITs are not the cheapest, they're not the highest yielding or even the fastest growing, but they offer some of the best combination of yield, value, growth and safety. And because of that, I expect them to generate exceptional risk adjusted returns for the investors. Hey everyone, this is Yussi, a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about two of my favorite REITs that I think most investors should consider owning in their portfolio. But before I get into it, I want to remind you that we are currently still offering a two-week free trial for REIT newsletter High Yield Landlord. So if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, check out the link in the description. So the first REIT that I want to discuss here is my favorite self-storage REIT. You may not know this but self-storage was the most rewarding property sector over the past decades, having generated roughly 20% average annual total returns to their shareholders. Good examples of storage REITs include extra space storage and public storage, and they've been so rewarding for the investors because of three key reasons. The first reason why self-storage REITs have been so rewarding is that there are significant benefits in scale in this property sector. These REITs have been able to consistently acquire properties from smaller, unsophisticated operators, and they would then massively boost their cash flow by simply changing their brand, implementing revenue optimization systems, and including them in their national advertising campaigns. Then the second reason why these REITs have been so rewarding is that they've been able to earn huge spreads over the cost of capital. In most property sectors, REITs will be happy to earn a roughly 200 basis point spread over the cost of capital. A good example here will be realty income having a roughly 5% cost of capital and acquiring properties at a 7% cap rate, you, you get a 2% spread. Well, self-storage REITs like public storage have historically been able to develop new properties at closer to a 10% initial stabilized yield. So if your cost of capital is 5% and you're making a 10% initial yield on your investment, that's a 500 basis basis point spread, which is two and a half time what a typical REIT like Realty Income will be earning. And then the third reason why self-storage is so profitable is that they are much more resilient during recessions and so they haven't suffered as many setbacks. The interesting thing about storage is that it's counter cyclical in a way because during recessions people may want to downside their homes and then they need to rent some storage space to store all the extra stuff and this also applies to businesses in a way. You, a business that has some office space or retail space they may want to downside all of that when times get tough and then once again they need to store all that extra stuff off elsewhere. In comparison, some other property sectors like hotels or offices or even retail space may struggle during recessions and so they have much more to lose. This has a big impact on your returns over a full cycle because the bad years count just as much as the good years. So all of this explains why self-storage REITs have been so exceptionally rewarding in the past, but I'm sure you've heard the saying that past performance is not indicative of future results, and I think that this applies particularly well to this specific case. These high returns have attracted a lot of capital into this sector, and so there's much more competition today. New properties have been built all over the place. At the same time, the smaller unsophisticated operators have also learned from the larger players and started to implement revenue optimization systems. Systems. They've also partnered with other owners to have stronger brands and national advertising campaigns. And so the reality is that the economics today of the self-storage market simply aren't as good as they were 10, 20 years ago. But the interesting thing here is that opportunities still remain abundant in many foreign markets. The European self-storage market is today still about 20 years behind the US and there is about 10 times less storage space per capita. Therefore, I think that some of the European self-storage REITs are today well positioned to replicate the successful model of American REITs back in Europe. And my favorite in this place is called Big Yellow Group, ticker symbol BYG. It's the leader in the UK and it's rapidly expanding its portfolio. Today, it's still early in its growth cycle. It has many development projects currently on the way and it's expecting to earn roughly 10% initial yields on them, which represents a significant spread over its cost of capital. 
They also have a very strong balance sheet with little debt. Their LTV is about 20%. So they have a lot of firepower to keep expanding their portfolio in the coming years. They also have an exceptional track record. They've earned roughly 16% average annual total return since going public 24 years ago. And that's despite having a major setback during the great financial crisis because they were over leveraged back then. If you adjust for that, the annual average returns actually bump up closer to 20%, but even 16% is way above average for rate. And I just think that they can keep this going for another decade or two. They are today still far smaller than their peers in the US, like extra space storage and public storage. They have a lot of the development projects on the way as I mentioned earlier. This is a concept that's rapidly growing in popularity now in Europe and so the future prospect look very bright. Despite that their valuation is today historically low because most European REITs as well as American REITs have crashed in recent years and as a result today their dividend yield is also historically high at 4% which really helps me to stay patient while I wait for this growth to take place. Hey before I go into the second REIT of this video could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button if you think that this content is valuable that really helped me a lot to grow this channel thank you so much in advance and then the second read i think most investors should consider is my favorite net list read which is called essential properties realty trust ticker symbol eprt here I want to clarify that there are other net lease REITs that I like a lot as well. I've mentioned on this channel previously, Agri Realty, NNN REIT, WPKRE, Vichy Properties, EPR Properties. So there are many others net lease REITs that are very attractive today. But my favorite from a long-term perspective is probably EPRT. This has been by far the most rewarding net lease REIT since it went public. It has managed to earn roughly four times higher total returns than its larger peer realty income. And EPRT was able to earn these higher returns returns by following a unique approach to net lease investing that's a lot more rewarding. In short, instead of going after the traditional net lease properties that are leased to big name tenants like Dollar General, Walgreens, CVS, uh, Chevron, and so on, instead, EPRT has been going after net lease properties that are leased to smaller middle market tenants. These properties are ignored by most investors because they are perceived to be a lot riskier, but as I'm going to show you, this is not necessarily the case. As a result, there is very little demand for these assets, and this has allowed EPRT to pick up these properties at much lower price that then result in higher returns and also because there's little demand for them it gives it better bargaining power to structure stronger lease terms that mitigate risks. These properties are more rewarding for EPRT because it's getting higher cap rates, faster rent escalations and it's earning larger spreads over its cost of capital. And in a way this property is also safer because as I mentioned earlier EPRT is able to structure stronger and safer leases with longer lease terms, higher rent coverage ratios, master lease protections, access to unit level profitability, corporate guarantees in some cases, true triple net leases. I mean, this is also something that's often ignored by net lease investors is that a lot of net lease rates will own a combination of triple net and double net. The difference here is that with a triple net lease, the tenant is responsible for all property expenses, including the maintenance, uh, property insurance, uh, taxes, and so on. But with a double net, the landlord would typically still be responsible for some of the expenses. As an example, the, what's typical is that the landlord will still be responsible for the maintenance of the structure, the roof, and the parking lot. So, so REITs like uh, Realty Income will own a combination of both triple and double net, but uh, EPRT only owns true triple net leases. So this is once again another advantage. And so overall with stronger leases and lower prices for the properties, higher cap rates, EPRT has historically been able to earn higher risk adjusted returns. And you don't have to take this just from me. I think that the ultimate proof that this approach is not much riskier than that of other net lease rates is in how EPRT performed during the pandemic. This was the worst possible crisis for net lease rates because for a while we were under very significant restrictions. Um, a lot of these properties couldn't operate their businesses properly or they even had to shut down temporarily. Despite that EPRT was still able to keep on growing its cash flow, it managed to maintain and even also grow its dividend payment and kept on outperforming its sector peers. So because of this I would argue that the risk profile of EPRT is not materially different from its peers like Realty Income and Agri Realty but despite that its business is quite a bit more rewarding. Today EPRT is still fairly small in size, its market cap is about 10 times smaller than that of Realty Income, its valuation multiple is very similar also that to its peers so there's, you're not paying a premium to get this faster growth and therefore I think that it's very likely to keep on outperforming over the coming decade. Last year EPRT was able to grow its FFO per share by about 7%. This was by far the highest growth rate in the net lease peer group. And when you combine this 7% growth rate with its 4.5% uh, dividend yield, you get roughly 12% 
annual total returns. 12% may not seem exceptional, but remember once again that this is coming from a fairly safe rate that has a business model that can consistently deliver above average returns with below average risk. And because of that, I think it's a very attractive position to hold in your portfolio. So if your goal is to outperform the market, I think that you should seek to own REITs like Big Yellow Group and EPRT. They have exceptional business models that have the potential to earn above average returns with below average risk and that's what alpha is all about now if you want to access my entire real money read portfolio you can join my read newsletter high yield landlord for a two-week free trial this is a real free trial you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days of your subscription so if you want to just come for that trial period to access more portfolio that's perfectly fine i'll put a link to it in the description of this video and then once more if you could please click the like button that will also help me a lot to grow this channel thank you so much in advance as you had my next one bye bye